Hi, I'm Warren Atlas. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon in Burlington County, New Jersey. I've been in practice now for 17 years in the South Jersey region, in which I devote 100% of my practice to the care of both the non-operative and operative treatment of spine pathology. Today we're going to be talking about the SI joint, which is the connection between your spine and where it intersects with the pelvis. So the sacrum is a terminal aspect of your spine. The ilium is a portion of your pelvis which articulates with your hip. So what you have is a relatively stable joint that sees a significant amount of force in terms of normal daily living, inclusive of walking, running, pivoting. As with any joint, the SI joint can degenerate and also can have traumatic causes that can lead to significant dysfunction. Patients typically present with low back pain, buttock pain, which is a very common complaint, so pain in that whole pelvic girdle region, and pain that can radiate either into their posterior thigh, their anterior thigh, pain associated with walking, ascending and descending stairs, any translational motion, okay, that could increase the force across your, your hip. And also patients report night pain associated with axial load or lying on their side. Low back pain is a very common problem. 80 to 90% of people present with back pain at some point in time in their life. 90% of back pain gets better within a six week period of time. Over patients that go on to have chronic and disabling pain, we, also, we always need to think about this sacred leg joint as a potential pain generator. And making the appropriate diagnosis is probably one of the, is the most important thing in terms of providing a good treatment algorithm for these patients. In terms of the initial Initial evaluation, you should get a good history, good physical exam, okay, understanding the pain pattern. Biggest complaint that they typically have is, is that back and buttock pain. On physical exam, it's important to appropriately diagnose somebody based on the concordant of positive physical findings, okay. Patients can have pain with axial loading, okay, they have tenderness overlying the sacral leg joint, and they have a positive test associated with pain reproduction with a maneuver where we flex and abduct the hip, no call. And if, if all these clinical signs correlate with their historical findings, you know, we believe, we, we think about the sacral leg joint as a potential mimicker or the potential source of one's back pain. Also, it's important a lot of these patients have had interventional care, understanding the relationship between the improvement with an epidural steroid injection, or what we call a selective nerve root block, where the steroids are injected around the nerve, okay, that may be the cause, and see if that helps their symptoms. And if that hasn't helped their symptoms, and an SI joint injection has been performed, and that gave them temporary relief for their symptoms, we're more likely to think that that is the source of their pain. After making the appropriate diagnosis of SI-induced pain, I tell the patient there are treatment options that are surgical. It is a minimally invasive surgical procedure. There are risks, but patients usually recover quite well. It takes about an hour. We make an incision two centimeters in size and the procedure is done under fluoroscopic or x-ray guidance. We place three triangular implants across the SI joint to provide stability. Typically, post-procedure, patients will be partial weight-bearing for two weeks in my practice, so they walk with the assistance of a walker or crutches. And at two weeks, if the patient is doing well, I allow them to weight bear as tolerated. At that point, they begin to increase their activity. They may complain of some residual pain associated with the surgical procedure, but the surgical procedure is relatively atraumatic. In terms of the iFuse implant, it was the first implant that was designed with good clinical efficacy and uh, some prospective randomized studies that have been proven to show that the iFuse procedure allows for successful clinical results. Since 2009, I have performed upward of 60 minimally invasive SI fusion procedures with the iFuse implant system. My opinion is you have something that works, you do it routinely, and you do it well. If you're interested in setting up an appointment to see me, irregardless of your pathology, please call my office and or visit our website to make an appointment.